Hey guys, what's up? It's Charles Float here and welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be dropping a brand new video from my link building course, Native NoFollow, where you'll be getting a complete introduction to trust signals, NoFollow links, link diversity, and all the reasons behind why NoFollow link building is so damn powerful in 2021. This video is the first video in the Native NoFollow course, which covers over four hours of training and gives you access to 100 plus SOPs for NoFollow links that you can get from DA and DR 80 to 99 websites. If you like this video, you're going to love the rest of the course and I'll be putting a $100 discount link in the description. So if you want to check out more of what's inside the course and get access to that juicy, juicy $100 off, then check out that in the description down below. I hope you enjoy this video. Let's just jump into things. So let's start things off then with trust signals. What exactly are trust signals? Essentially, trust signals are anything that allows Google to gauge the authority and the realness of your website. They're any kind of signal that Google looks to validate the authenticity of your website. This stuff is really, really important when you're looking at things like e-commerce because online especially, it's extremely easy to get scammed. And if Google doesn't question the realness of a website when people are actually going to be putting transactions into it, then it's very easy for Google to start burning their own users as they'll be sending them to wrong and fake pages um, as well as the fact that it's just bad for Google's bottom line years and years to come when those users leave the service because they've been scammed or taken to dodgy pages by Google itself so trust signals are the way that Google essentially looks at a website and validates its authenticity and makes sure that it is a completely real website as I said it gets more and more important depending on the different keywords that you're using specifically transactional or YMYL your money your life things like your healthcare things like your insurance or your finances loans etc these trust signals become majorly majorly important now with foreign SEO and non-English SERPs specifically um, it tends to be a lot less impactful uh, where you're using trust signals to show and rank and for some reason Google's algorithms just aren't on the same level to be able to validate the authenticity of non-English websites as they are with English websites. But when you're talking about real authority, actually having a real website, actually being an expert on a topic in Google, Google's ability to actually understand that and to be able to pinpoint who or who isn't a real authority in a space is actually very bad. Google can't really turn around and say you are a doctor or you aren't a doctor because they don't have the access to the databases that the governments run around the world. So they can't really validate people's real credentials. It's all about using these kinds of trust signals to be able to tell Google Google that you are really an authority and a lot of people don't get this right because they just simply don't know that they have to set them up in the first place and it is a lot of the battle in a, in a in and of itself is just simply convincing Google that you're enough of an authority to do that and just hitting as many of those trust signals that you possibly can. So I'm guessing in your heads now you're asking yourself, Charles, well, what are these trust signals that you're talking about? So I'm going to give you a load of examples here of trust signals. But bear in mind, right at the bottom here, we have the on-page trust signals ebook that's later in the course that will give you all of the trust signals for actually on your website. I'm just going to be giving you examples for ones that are off your website or externally uh, or external factors sorry so starting off you have things like domain age that is how old your domain is how old it's been registered and yes if it has dropped or if it has expired that does count against you you want to be able to have that clean run of continually having the domain for many many years if not at this point decades because some websites and some competitors will literally have had domains that are decades and decades old at this point active and engaged social profiles that doesn't mean you're just going to go and set up your social profiles and run it on zapier you need to have legitimate social profiles that are continually posting have comments on them have likes etc because that's just going to at the end of the day future proof you against algorithm updates that are going to specifically look at social profiles to see the activity of a website it's a very easy indicator to see if uh, businesses don't engage online to very simply look at their social profiles and see the last time they posted was in 2013 and on to social profiles you also have social signals that doesn't mean the actual social profiles themselves but it means the things like likes to your page tweets about your page all those kinds of good interactions that you get on social media websites that google can then index and refer to as a good metric to see how shared and how active and how engaged with your pages are from your audience uh, perspective rather than from your perspective of your own 
social profiles. That's what signals come into where your users are trying to engage with your pages. But obviously, in our kind of um, environment, we can go ahead and try and fake those. And I'll give you guys a really fantastic service that I personally use to build all of my social signals on a daily basis later in the course. And then you've got who is info. A lot of people like to just stick up the private who is info on there. I personally like to use some kind of fake or altered uh, who is info just to actually try and link a real person to it, especially if you're using a real person's identity on the website itself. If you can link that to the who is in any kind of way, it makes it even more authentic in Google's eyes from a trust signal perspective. Then you have good hosting in IP neighborhoods. Essentially what you don't want to be doing is picking up those cheap shared hosting packages, things like um, Host, HostGator, etc. They're really, really bad in the long run and you don't really know who else is in your IP neighborhood that could be potentially hurting your own stuff. If you can ideally get your own dedicated IP, that is probably the best way to go. They are a bit more expensive, but most services will do it you for 50 cents a dollar a month add-on to your actual hosting packages. And if they don't offer it on their own dashboard, just contact the support, see if they do on there. If you're already on hosting and it's not affecting you in any way and you don't seem to be affecting your rankings from it, then there's no point in changing. It's just going to cause a load of other problems when you're trying to move hosts, etc. Unless they do it all for you, then it might be a good move. Um, and then, of course, you've got the on-page trust signals ebook later in the course, which is going to take you through a complete rundown of all the trust signals that are on the actual website itself, rather than these kinds of external factors. But hopefully that gives you a good enough couple of examples to understand what trust signals actually are and how they affect your website. Okay, and next up is foundational link building. Foundational link building are all of the backlinks that are, it's in the name, you're going to build at the foundation of your website, the day one of when your website goes live, everything that is going to be the foundation of all of your link building campaign from the very beginning. It's going to build out your initial entity stack. And what am I talking about an entity stack? Essentially, an entity is something that is within Google's own algorithms that creates a terminology around a specific word or set of keywords. As an example, Coca-Cola is an entity in of itself because it is linked to the brand Coca-Cola. You're trying to create your own entity brand where it creates an entire uh, word or, or several words around it to be around specifically your website. That's when your website comes up. It also comes up with your social profiles. It also comes up with your Wikipedia page. Anything that you have to do with your brand, it comes up with a page and none of your competitors could ever really rank there because it has nothing to do with the entity about you. That's all about foundational link building. That's how you go and build the links from day one for your website and how you try and get it to be as uh, as good from day one as physically possible. So let's look at some link types for foundational link building. We can of course start with things like social profiles as we talked about already. This is also kind of in the trust signal area where you're building your social profiles that will also very highly likely rank for the actual brand entity keywords themselves as well. Um, and then you've got things like citations and directories. These are extremely important if you have a physical address and they Google My Business listing. Half the time when you're searching your brand name, you're actually going to want them to look up your GMB, so your Google My Business listing, um, so that they get your phone number, they get your website, they get the reviews, they get it all nicely and neatly in one place to be able to see what your business is all about and how you can try and infuse trust into your customers by them googling you and being able to see all of this amazing praise around your business citations really help with you actually going up in the local rankings as well so if you're looking to do any kind of local SEO citations and directories are going to be the backbone of your link building campaigns from the beginning because that's how Google references a ton of the GMB ranking elements. Then you've got things like niche blog comments. Over the years, niche blog comments have gone down and down in terms of the uh, usefulness or trustworthiness, should I say, from people. But at the end of the day, if you can find really good websites that still allow you to get a link from their blog comments, because I know a lot of websites have actually just straight up disabled blog comments or, or they've disabled the uh, website field where you can input your website into. But if you can go and find those good high authority or kind of mid authority niche sites that have good blog content on them, they approve their comments and they're manually approve their comments so that you make sure that every comment on there is only a good, decent one. And you can, of course, insert your link into there and make sure that you're doing it all slowly, etc. It's a fantastic link type still. And despite what a lot of people say, it's still relevant. Then you've got image links. This is kind of what it says on the tin, making sure that you can get any kind of images that are. Uh, back to your website and we're going to talk about this in detail later because there's some really black cat -esque strategies that you can use to go ahead and get a ton of image links. Google kind of counts image links 
different to a lot of the other types of links that we're doing, but we'll kind of get into that later on because they're, uh, they're treated quite differently to every other kind of link because they're non-contextual um, and they're non-content based whatsoever. So it's, it's treated kind of differently, but they're still extremely powerful. And then you have forum profiles and posts. And of course, out of the last three, these are probably the most controversial because a lot of people just completely ignore forum profiles. They think they're spammed to death. They have no uh, validity at all. And a lot of the softwares that we were previously using to build these kind of forum profiles, the exact same kind of thing with blog comments, they've just removed that website field altogether. You have to go and try and find the exact uh, softwares, and we'll talk about that a bit later on as well, that actually allow you to build out those kinds of links. So with forums and forum profiles, um, forum profiles are the much easier one to go about link building with because it's very easy to just go and insert your website into that profile field. With posts, it's significantly more difficult to try and build out forum pro uh, post links because they are contextual, which means they're a lot better than most of the other kind of links on this site. But of course, forums are generally heavily, heavily moderated uh, by the moderators and admins of them. And if they see you inserting links into your posts, etc., a lot of the time they'll just either uh, remove your post or they straight up ban your account and it's obviously going to remove a lot of the work that you've tried to put into building that link for them to just straight up ban you. As well as the fact that you have to use unique content, you have to create content, you have to try and work your uh, links into posts that are either brand new threads or replies to other posts. It's an extremely convoluted and complicated process and a lot of the time people just get it uh, more wrong than they do right. So hopefully in this course I can show you the exact ways to build forum profile links amazingly and very fast. And the final thing I need to give you an intro to is link diversity. Now, link diversity is all about the two things, which is making sure that you're going to be staying safe with your link building campaigns and you're going to be future proofing your algorithm updates. Link diversity is kind of what it says in the tin. It's all about diversifying your link building campaigns to make sure that you're staying safe with every single one and you're not just building guest posts and niche edit type links that are going to over uh, convolute your campaign with just purely anchor and do follow base links that are trying to manipulate your page rank essentially. So these kinds of links are going to make sure that your, your campaign stays on track, it looks natural, it looks clean and it stays safe which is of course the most important thing that you're doing with SEO. You never ever want to get a site hit. That's kind of the worst thing that we're looking at doing in the entire world unless we're doing some kind of churn and burn algorithms. But at the end of the day that's not a very good strategy anymore. I highly recommend you stick with me on this one because it's a very important topic which we're talking about which comes to link diet and it's also kind of a bit of a difficult one. So start straight off the bat, no follow diversity. Essentially, you have the two differences between do follow and no follow that as Nick Hubank says, do follow might not necessarily be a thing because it doesn't really exist in a, in, a, in and of itself. It's more just a follow link, but we'll get onto that for another day. Um, no follow diversity essentially allows you to build more questionable links. So essentially, if you've got a lot higher number of no follow links and a lot higher number of trust signal based links, then you can generally get away with more links that Google might penalize other websites for or might drop their rankings on other sites for because you have those uh, li links in place. They also keep your campaign safe against link velocity. Um, if you're trying to build a hundred do follow links at your website within a month, that's probably going to be a bad idea. But if you have 200, 300 no follow links that also diversify those hundred do follows, then it can actually kind of save your campaign, even though it's a higher number of links um, from that link velocity factor because you're getting a more diverse number of links coming to your site. So it looks more natural. If one page is just getting completely smashed with do follow links, it's going to look completely unnatural, as well as the fact that it unlocks the power of your default links. So essentially, because you can build more of them and because you can be more aggressive with your default links, you can use those more uh, keyword based anchors in your defollows whilst you're using more branded anchors in your no follows and making sure that every single link that you build is going to be offset by those no follow links on top of them. You've also got ank text diversity. Now, ank text diversity is very important in the current state of the algorithm because Google has gotten more and more aggressive with how much it goes after exact match keyword based ank text. You'll have seen over the years. Google's got uh, more and more aggressive with how it goes after those exact match anchor texts because we have seen it through a load of different sites getting absolutely smashed with those 10%, 20%, 40% kind of exact match keywords within their anchor texts. Um, as well as the fact that you can also stack your brand entity. So making sure that you're using all of those branded and uh, generic and URL based anchor texts can allow you to unlock your kind of brand entity in Google and allow you to rank a lot higher within Google by allowing you to use uh, for, for your own kind of brand and allowing you to unlock kind of the uh, different positions for other keywords in that for, for other positions, sorry, in your own brand's keyword. 
So making sure that you have both nofollow and an anchor text diversity is extremely important. We'll go into a lot more detail later on about anchor text diversity specifically. And of course, we're going to be going all through nofollow link building anyway. That's, that's it though for this introduction. I hope you understand all of the different parts and nuances of what we're going to be going through in the rest of the course now. Uh, this should have given you a complete introduction and examples of what we're going to be training and what we're going to be looking at. But of course, all the details are really going to be throughout the rest of the course. So let's just jump into it.